Hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> my name is Michael Roy, and I'm the uh, EO, uh, Executive Director of Clearview Treatment Programs. And we're really happy to uh, be able to uh, give this presentation for you. For uh, Susan Horvat, who you see, is going to be doing the presentation. And Susan is a, a licensed professional counselor in California. Um, and um, an expert in dialectical behavior therapy. Uh, and Susan um, will be giving the presentation self-care strategies to help you cope with COVID-19 and be giving sort of all kinds of tips and strategies um, to help uh, in this difficult time. So uh, we're really happy to be able to do this. And um, thank you all for uh, logging in and signing up for this. And we hope that you're holding up well in this super challenging time. Um, it's really um, something none of us have ever seen, and um, we really want to, you know, be able to support people and uh, help people through this. Um, something that uh, none of us have ever seen before. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just going to be um, just giving a really short overview of what we do here at Clearview. Some of you may already know this, and some not. Um, so we're a treatment program in, in Los Angeles that's been around for 20 years. Um, we have three programs. We have our outpatient center in Westwood, <clears throat> and now we're doing all virtual uh, uh, teletherapy through Zoom, which we're using tonight. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. And then we have two residential programs, and I'll just give you a quick overview. Um, so our outpatient, as I mentioned, it's all uh, over, it's all online everything through Zoom. <clears throat> we have a day program so people can come and participate in, in uh, a variety of different types of groups and therapies um, from around nine to five, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, uh, about nine to five, it's six hours a day, Monday through Friday. And there's all kinds of different groups. We have about 40 different groups that we do throughout the week. And, uh, and then in the day program, People also get two individual sessions per week, and they also can get um, online meetings with the psychiatrist, with the dietitian if needed. So it's a you know fairly uh, customized program. <clears throat> we also have an IOP program, intensive outpatient program, and that's in the daytime or the evening. It's three hours a day, uh, five, uh, three to five days per week. Uh, and um, you can also have individual therapy, psychiatry, working with the dietitian in that program, or you can stay with your own therapist if you have one and work with one of our therapists as a case manager. So really um, just to help people to get more support, more structure in their days, um, especially through this crisis, but um, you know, of course, just helping people with a variety of different types of issues. Um, then we also have a, our outpatient program, which is less intensive. It's maybe two to five groups per week and in individual therapy. It's uh, you know, very uh, individualized based on whatever your needs are. Um, and then our lowest level of care is our, DB, our standard DBT program, which is just one group, one individual session and coaching. Um, we're very well known for doing uh, dialectical behavior therapy um, and uh, many of our therapists are certified by the Linehan Board, and, um, and we do what's called comprehensive DBT, which is kind of like by the book DBT, um, and there's phone coaching available after treatment hours, and it's really a great, uh, a great therapy and a great program. And we do a lot of other types of therapies and treatments as well. Um, then we have two residential programs. We have our Women's Center for Borderline Personality Disorder, and emotion dysregulation. So not everybody has borderline personality disorder, but uh, some people just have traits or they might be struggling with depression or bipolar disorder, anxiety, PTSD, um, all kinds of different things. Um, oh, I just was told my uh, computer shaking because it's on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop doing that. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. Thanks, Sandra. Um, Sandra's our, one of our clinical directors and she's uh, on here too. Um, so our women's program is, um, it's basically like a residential program. It's live and breathe DBT 24 seven, um, full treatment Monday through Friday, 
all throughout the day, um, milieu coaching, and, uh, and when people get passes, they can get phone coaching. So um, I'm just gonna plug my computer in, sorry. it's uh, I haven't done many of these, as you can tell. <laughs> um, so um, <clears throat> both of the residential programs are still open and they're considered a cent what's called essential services by the state. So certain types of businesses and especially, you know, programs like ours are allowed to uh, continue to operate in and the state really wants these programs as essential services that provide people with, uh, with help for, you know, all kinds of uh, issues. Um, they, you know, they want them to be open and of course we are exercising all kinds of precautions and following CDC recommendations and state guidelines. And we have all kinds of enhanced uh, sanit uh, procedures and enhanced screening. Um, and um, so with, you know, that's, uh, that's how we're operating the residential program. So we're really you know, providing a safe uh, environment for people that need that higher level of care. And then lastly, we have our our dual diagnosis program, it's for people with, a, with any sort of addictions, drug or alcohol, and co-occurring mental health issues. And again, it's like kind of a live and breathe uh, treatment therapy program. We do a lot of DBT in all of our programs uh, and, and taking the same precautions and enhanced screening uh, procedures that, uh, we, that I just mentioned. So um, if anybody has any questions about any of this, you can email um, myself or Susan um, or any of our staff at um, my email. Well, my email is michael at clearviewtreatment.com uh, and uh, Susan will give you hers. Um, and our, our phone number, um, if you want information about our programs or any information is 1-800-573-0750. Uh, um, Lori will correct me if that's wrong, but um, that's, that's the number I'm pretty certain. Um, I think you got it right. Okay, so um, I'm going to turn things over to Susan, and I wish you all well and uh, to be safe and healthy, and i um, so glad that you joined us, and we will be doing more of these, so um, you'll get information about that as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michael. All right, let's get started. I'm going to just get the PowerPoint uh, rolling here. From beginning. And actually, I'm gonna, here we go. I'm gonna do a, Green share. Okay, here it is. All right. So, hello again, everyone. Um, as as Michael said, I'm I'm Susan Horvat, and I'm a licensed professional clinical counselor. Um, the primary types of therapy that I do, therapeutic modalities um, that I use are dialectical behavior therapy or DBT, as Michael mentioned. I also do eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or EMDR, which is a type of trauma therapy. At Clearview, I facilitate and or co-facilitate the um, following groups, mindfulness, self-compassion, mindfulness for target behaviors, and then an intensive DBT group, which occurs three times a week. Um, one thing I wanna say just before we get into the, the primary slides here, I, I just wanna encourage you all to take a one mindful approach to the time that we have here. Um, you've, you've chosen to be here and um, I really want you to get the most out of it. And I'm, I'm really happy that you're taking your self care seriously. And I hope that you get good information here today. And 
um, that you can use for yourself and that you can pass along to friends and family members, loved ones. So um, when I when I talk about a one mindful approach, I just mean trying to get rid of any distractions that you have around you so that you can really focus and soak this information in just for the next hour. And it's less than an hour. It's just going to fly by. Okay. And the last thing um, is please hold any questions until the end. Um, the last 10 to 15 minutes, I'll take questions and we'll do it via the chat function. So you can type in a question in the chat and then I'll, I'll answer that way. Okay. All right, so uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this slide because you are all very aware of how much stress you're under. We're all under a tremendous amount of stress, uh, just layers of it. And so, um, but, I, but I did want to talk about it sort of as a rationale for why we chose to do this and provide this uh, presentation, this webinar. Uh, because it, it, it's so incredibly important due to all the stress that we are under. Um, the first word I have here is unprecedented. And I put it in quotations just because we hear this word so often nowadays. I mean, every day, if not multiple times a day. And it ha it's not just the past couple of months that we've been hearing it. We've been hearing it for the past couple of years even. And so just thinking about all the things that are happening in our world um, that are new and that we've never seen before. And, you know, I know some people will say, well, we've had, we've, we've had um, illnesses, widespread illnesses and outbreaks and things like that before. And that's true. Um, however, what's different about this is that it, it's so incredibly widespread throughout the entire world and we're all aware of it at the same time. So that social media function, the internet, um, has made it a, such a unique time for all of us so that the entire world is dealing with this essentially and we're dealing with it together. And so there's pros and cons of that. On one hand, it's very stressful and sad and scary to see what what people are going through. And it's also a way that we can feel connected to each other because as I said, we're all we're all in this together as human beings. So um, that's something to think about as we go through here. Um, the news and the media kind of touched on that. Um, it, Wow, it can be so incredibly overwhelming. Um, panic and reactivity or impulsivity. I'm just thinking about the concept of making things worse and, and how, you know, not only are we dealing with a lot of these stressors today, um, the various impacts, such as, you know, losing jobs and, um, or fear of losing jobs, no health insurance or losing health insurance, losing retirement plans, savings, citizenship issues, um, worrying about the economy, all of that. I mean, there, there's so much more um, than just that. So um, the various impacts that we're dealing with, so not only are we dealing with those things, but we're also dealing with the way our culture is reacting and some people are really panicking. And so we're, we're seeing things like the, the panic buying. Um, I, I don't know about you. I'm down to two rolls of toilet paper, um, including the one on my roll on my dispenser right now. So I'm, you know, I'm going to <laughs> going to target tomorrow morning first thing. So cross wish me luck, but you know, who would have thought that we're dealing with that on top of everything. Um, so I talked about various impacts. Also just the isolation factor, okay? So feeling isolated and feeling vulnerable. I mean, that's, you know, some of these things like fear of the unknown, feeling out of control, 
this is the epitome of feeling out of control and the fear of the unknown. There's lots of changes um, that we're all dealing with in our lives. And man, I don't know how many of you feel comfortable with change, but um, most people usually struggle with change. Even positive changes can be stressful, but we're all dealing with so much change. And then all the worries, worries about our health, our safety, um, and the health and safety of our loved ones, and then being separated from them on top of it. So yes, very, very stressful time. And so that's why this is so incredibly important for us to be taking self-care seriously. So keep calm and practice self-care. <laughs> One thing um, I really want to point out here is how important humor is. It really is during this time. Um, so it's, it's, it's very important to be able to have a sense of humor even, even amidst the stress, you know, some days, sometimes you laugh and sometimes you cry, but, but that self, a sense of humor can, can really carry you, um, which is helpful. Okay. So one of the things I want you to think about is decreasing vulnerability factors. So I want you to think about limiting the amount of time that you spend consuming the news, social media, researching COVID-19, and um, also interacting with individuals who tend to be pessimistic and or catastrophizing. And, you know, we know who these people are, and, and sometimes they're our, our dear loved ones. And so one idea that I have for, for that in particular is to maybe say to that person, hey, I really care about you and I want to be, I, I want to be in your life and I want to talk to you and stay in contact. But I'm wondering if we can limit our conversation about COVID-19 to five to 10 minutes and then talk about something else with the rest of our time. That might be something to do. The other thing that you could do in terms of not being inundated or bombarded by the news and social media and all of that is change the settings in your phone so that you don't automatically get all of these alerts. Um, you know, sometimes we're just using our phone, even like I'll use my phone for self soothing or, or, or relaxation or self care purposes. And then something stressful will, you know, a stressful headline will pop up. And so um, that's something that I recently did was um, turn off the, I went into the settings and I turned off the notifications. That way I can be more intentional that when I'm checking the news, I'm checking the news. And when I'm relaxing and trying to self-soothe and focus on other things, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, reduce or completely abstain from the consumption of mood altering substances. So I'm talking about alcohol, I'm talking about marijuana. I'm even talking about, I mean, I'm talking about sugar even. When you think about it, if we um, consume a lot of carbs, especially when we're in isolation, that can really impact your mood. So to be aware of your vulnerability factors there. That, um, and then also caffeine. If, if you're feeling more anxious, that can contribute to more anxiety. So just keep, you know, keep an eye on that. Also, if you're working from home, try to keep your workspace separate from your relaxation space. So if you're working at the dining room table and that's where you work during the day, clear it off at night so that you're not sitting in your chair trying to relax and then looking over and thinking about work. Because, um, you know, one thing that I've kind of noticed is it's easier um, to just keep working. Or, or to think, oh, oh, I, I could do this one more thing, and and then and then you know pretty soon your night's gone, and and um, you feel exhausted, and you know it's so you really have to have pretty pretty strict boundaries with yourself, and in terms of working at home, and and it's an adjustment, um, 
for those of us who are fortunate enough to be able to still be working right now. Okay, I also want you to think about increasing your protective factors. So intentionally prioritizing self-care. So as, as we go through these ideas, I want you to be thinking about what things you could do. You don't have to do everything here and some of these things aren't gonna fit for you. Some, some you might like, oh, okay. And some you might already be doing. Um, but you might, this might be a great time to set a goal to just integrate a, a few, a few new things into your repertoire. You know, I mean, you don't have to change everything. Uh, just make, just add three things, three new things that you're doing. Um, so I want you to think about your health in terms of physical health, how are you meeting your physical needs, your psychological needs, including cognitive and emotional. So that, you know, it being intellectually stimulated and taking care of your emotional health and socializing with others, connecting, and then your spiritual health, whatever that means to you. Uh, establishing and maintaining a routine. This is huge right now. It's huge. So I know it's tempting for people who aren't working or for people who are working from home to sleep in and stay in your pajamas all day and just kind of, you know, stay up really late at night and just do whatever. Um, but I want you to consider really maintaining or just establishing a new routine in your new situation. So that means still setting the alarm um, Monday through Friday, you know, and, and getting getting out of bed, um, getting dressed, um, washing your face, brushing your teeth, making the bed, having breakfast, you know, just getting your day started. Um, this is this is important for everyone. Collect, connect with loved ones safely. So get creative, think outside the box, and have fun with it. So I'm just thinking about how um, my loved ones and I, right now, we've been um, setting up a weekly Zoom family meeting, and we have themes. So this week it was where everybody wear your favorite hat. <laughs> so that was fun. You know, we just have fun with it, get creative. And I have some resources and some ideas I want to share with you get fresh air and sunshine, okay? Um, it, even if it's opening the window to let some fresh air in, uh, going for walks on your breaks or, or just throughout your day. I have a, a chocolate Labrador, 10-year-old um, dog, um, and, and so I take her out 10, or, or sorry, three, three times a day. And so that's really helpful. That's really helpful for me, but um, even if you don't have a pet, Make sure you're out there and you're doing it. I know some people are afraid to go outside right now, but what the experts are saying is that it is safe to go outside as long as we're keeping our distance. We're, we're maintaining that social distancing um, six feet. Um, okay, and take care, take care of your body. In DBT, we have a skill. We have a lot of acronyms in DBT, but one of them is the PLEASE skill. And it's just, in, it's an acronym that basically talks about all the various things that we need to do to take care of our body in order to take care of our mind so that we're not emotionally vulnerable. And so that includes things like nutrition. And um, I put joyful movement, sometimes exercise, um, you know, hits people the wrong way. And, you know, again, this is a theme, but we have to get creative with exercise right now too. But figuring out ways to move your body that feel good to you, stretching, maybe trying yoga or maybe doing some dancing, um, you know, shut the shades of your apartment and dance like no one's watching, <laughs> um, you know, try something. Um, and then um, bound sleep. I want, I, I, I went a little deeper into bound sleep and I actually added this slide this morning because I have been hearing this constantly. I've been hearing this from clients that it's difficult right now. I've been hearing this from colleagues that it's difficult right now, from friends and family members. And I myself have been struggling with this. And I'm normally a very good sleeper. And I've been struggling with sleep. So um, I just wanted to give you this very specific uh, 
information on sleep hygiene. So the idea is that, again, routine is key. Consider a bedtime alarm um, or maybe, you know, setting the, um, a notification that goes off a, an hour before you're ready to crawl into bed so that you just start winding down. Aim for six to eight hours. Some people really thrive on six hours. They're like, I'm good to go, six hours. And some people really need a good solid eight to nine hours. So know thyself, as Socrates says. Um, it's important that you know you figure out what works for you and, and get that, get that amount of sleep. No screens at least an hour before bed. Uh, this is just a general recommendation um, that you know we having that blue light in in your face makes it harder for you to relax and um, to shut down your mind um, so so really trying to put your phone away think about charging your phone across the bedroom because it's so tempting to just grab it when you're laying in bed and to look at things and go on social media scroll all those things um, or maybe even charge it in another room Okay, so um, think about some of those things. Also, do something relaxing or self-soothing to wind down 30 to 60 minutes before you shut off the lights and close your eyes. So I put, I put down various ideas. Yoga Nidra, I, I'm new to this. I just tried it for the very first time last night. It's basically a guided uh, meditation that involves the body and gets you into a relaxed state. And I did one that was really focused on sleeping and it was wonderful. So I really had a great experience with that. Guided imagery meditations. I highly recommend the Honest Guys on YouTube. They have a lot of different guided imagery meditations that you can choose from. Um, I did one, um, a Lord of the Rings themed one the other day and I, I, it worked for me. I fell asleep. Um, in Bilbo Baggins' little hobbit hut um, next to a crackling fire, listening to him scribble away on working on his book. It was quite pleasant. So um, give it a try. Reading a book um, or listening to an audio book. I, mean, I put that down the example of Harry Potter. And one of the reasons is because it's fiction and because it's lighthearted, um, lighter hearted. You know, I wouldn't pick something that's, that's really, um, you know, don't pick like a self-help book or, or something that's going to get you riled up, but pick something that you can go into a whole nother world and kind of escape and, and, um, really focus on that. Mindful coloring. This is so relaxing. Journaling, um, you know, some people, I, I'm, I'm a journal. I've been journaling since I was a little girl. Um, I know for some people it makes them ruminate more. So just, you know, if you want to give it a try and see how it works for you. Some people like to just write about how their day was and it may not work for you, um, but that's an option. A gratitude practice. This is huge. This is so huge. Um, if you can just get concrete about it and maybe list three things from today that you're grateful from for that is is essential for resiliency um herbal tea drinking some herbal tea that's a soothing thing to do obviously no caffeine light a candle creating an atmosphere that's relaxing and soothing so you can shut down and then maybe listening to some relaxing instrumental music. So these are all things you can try. I hope that's helpful for you um, if you're having any, any troubles with your sleep. Okay. So I, I included this quote from um, Pema Chodron and um, I just thought it was, it was, um, thought-provoking. We can make ourselves miserable or we can make ourselves strong. The amount of effort is the same. So, something to think about. Okay. All right. So these are uh, um, a couple of DVT skills. Uh, distract and improve the moment. And I just 
Um, this, these aren't all the strategies in Distract and Improve the Moment. They're both acronyms. Uh, but I, I, I sort of was picking and choosing the ones that I thought would be helpful for the purpose of this talk. So what we've got here is the first one talks about activities, okay? And so that's focusing, uh, maybe focusing your attention on a task that you've been meaning to get done or something that you've been meaning to do. Um, you know, something that's been sitting there but you've been too busy. Well, most of us have more time now, a little more time at least. And this might be the time to do it. Um, I think about, gosh, you know, if there's, if there's a hobby or, you know, like I, learning guitar, learning, learning an instrument. Um, I just signed up for a master class, actually. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be taking a writing class. It's something I've, I love doing, you know. Um, and so I'm, I'm I'm going to take the time and I'm going to do it now. So thinking about that, the things that you, you might get to do now. Again, a little bit more on the, the silver linings side of things or making lemonade. Correspondence. All right, so maybe this, maybe this is emailing. Maybe this is calling. Maybe this is um, just texting a nice message, thinking about people, sharing resources, um, you know, maybe it's a video call, or maybe, whoa, maybe, just maybe, it's handwriting a letter. What's that? I don't know. I mean, it's, it, the sky's the limit. So, correspondence. I think that one of the major themes here is it's so important for us to stay connected to one another right now. Cooking, so you know, if you love cooking and want to pick it up again or want to practice, um, get better at it, great. Listening to music, playing music, journaling, mindful coloring, reading, playing games. Okay, so this is one of the resources that I told you I was gonna share. Um, I recently found out about this from a colleague who's been playing games with her family members remotely. Um, and she she's using Jackbox games, and so they're they're playing different different games online together. Even though they can't be in the same room or in the same house or in the same place together, they can still play games. So this is great. Um, the, a similar thing to that is um, the Netflix party. So you can watch movies or TV together remotely. Okay. Um, crossword puzzles, go for a mindful walk. I, I talked about dancing before. In terms of the mindful walk, I want to encourage you to do something. If you're like me, I, I enjoy listening to audiobooks or music when I'm walking. Um, and so then I'll have my headphones on and they have the noise canceling function, which really keeps me in my head and in my space, which was okay before this stay at home shelter in place stuff started happening. But I mean, I live alone now. And so I don't have a lot of human contact or interaction aside from through screens. So what I've noticed is that my neighbors are coming out into their yards more and they're talking to each other more and they're waving and they're saying hi and they're interacting and they're doing projects together. And so it's an opportunity to connect with people. You know, you can keep your distance, of course, your, for safety, but just if someone says hi to you, being able to hear them say hi and to respond. And it, you know, it may seem small, but it's, it, it, it's powerful. It's powerful. Um, another thing is just being able to hear the birds, getting out of your head and being able to hear the birds uh, another thing I like to do on mindful walks is, is it just it cracks me up. We have these little geckos at, um, in the courtyard of my apartment complex, and they will just dart across the sidewalk every now and then, and just cracks me up. But I, I, I you know, the best teachers for mindfulness 
our animals and children. And this is a reminder to me when I hear the birds chirping and I see the geckos going about their day darting across the sidewalk, it reminds me that the sky is not falling. And that's helpful. Okay, contributing. All right, so this is the idea that um, if we can give back, um, if we can help or support others, I know a lot of people feel so helpless right now, but and there are ways that we can support one another, whether it be financially supporting certain um, causes that you feel passionately about, that you really care about. I know the food shelf is really needing donations at this time. There's lots of different um, people and um, animals and, and things that are that are in need right now. So we, we can do that. Um, also offering to grocery shop for someone who's vulnerable, who can't go out of their home. Um, you know, there, there are things that we can do and, and that, that helps. Making meaning. I've talked a little bit about this already, but it's that concept of making lemonade, considering the opportunities or the silver linings in this situation. Of course, we would never choose what we're going through right now. And there are some things that are coming out of it that we can appreciate and experience. And so one example that I put here was now might be a good time to extinguish old unhealthy behaviors and replace them with healthier habits. You know, you have a little more time to focus on things like that. Okay. Next one is prayer, prayer and meditation. And so there's different kinds of meditations that you can do. Um, to put out loving energy into the world, um, loving kindness or a Tonglen meditation where you breathe in the suffering of other people and then you breathe out love and, um, and strength. And um, consider also, like I talked about before, a gratitude practice, that's huge. No matter where you, what you believe in, a gratitude practice is very much linked to wellness and um, like I said before resiliency also look to religious leaders or spiritual teachers for guidance in this time I think that's one thing that we don't always we don't always think to do um, and some people are good at it but we we don't always think to go to the wise and to listen to what they have to say um, and, and that might be something you can try. I, I, and in the resource page at the very end, I, I made a list of, of some people that are, are good resources if you're interested. Last one, brief vacation. Keyword here is brief. <laughs> so it might just be five minutes. It might be, I gotta take a break. I gotta tune out and now's the time for those noise canceling headphones. You put them on and then just go and go into your own world and forget what's happening. So five minutes, um, it might be as long as 24 hours. So the, in DBT, we talk about the, you know, kind of the, the rule of thumb is not, not longer than 24 hours. And I'm thinking of those t-shirts that people sometimes wear that can't adult today t-shirts. And it's sort of, it's that concept. It's the idea that you're pushing the situation away by leaving it for a while. Um, either, it, you know, in this case, it, it's more mentally that you're leaving the situation. And sometimes that's, going into a binge watching session on Netflix. And hey, one of the other silver linings is that if you really want to catch up on a TV show, less guilt, you, you have less guilt about, oh, I should be out doing X, Y, or Z. Guess what? You can stay home and you can catch up on your show. I've been rewatching Downton Abbey. So relaxing. Love it. Okay. Mindfulness. This was my first love in terms of psychology and it has absolutely 
changed my life for the better and I have seen it change other people's lives for the better. It's extremely evidence-based. It's been around for 2,500 years and we have lots of research on it now. So mindfulness is a, a solid, solid strategy to go with uh, if you're wanting to decrease stress and increase freedom, happiness, a sense of peace in your life. All right, so we started with a pretty simple quote, but it, 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 it says it, be here now, that's mindfulness. Be here now, be in the present moment. Just thinking about um, the quotes from Ram Das, and that that is the title of one of his most famous books. He passed away in December actually, but um, I was reading an article about him and um, when, he, when he was driving, um, he, he had this kind of old beater car that we'd drive around and he had a, supposedly had a bumper sticker on the back that said, I'd rather be here now. <laughs> I just, I thought that was so cute. So, um, Something to think about with that is, is that, you know, a lot of the suffering that we do, a lot of the struggling that we do, the anxiety, the depression, or, or just any unwanted symptoms happens because we're stuck in the past or worrying about the future. Okay. So the present moment, this is where we're living right now. You're living right here and now. And that's where the next quote comes in. You only have moments to live. And that, that's not supposed to be threatening or scary. It's just when you really think about it, sort of in a philosophical way, you only have moments to live. Hmm. Okay, so we should live within the moments. So you all have chosen to spend an hour of your life here. And so have I, and we're here together. And that's kind of powerful. We'll never get this minute back. You know, it's April Fool's Day. Yeah, it's April 1st, 2020, um, 6.14 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, we'll never get this moment back again. So that, that's a powerful concept, but we're here. We're here now. And so to, um, a lot of times people will talk about things that will anchor you in the present and the breath is one of the things that will do that for you. Um, because the breath is always in the present, even when our mind is in the future or in the past, our breath is in the present. So if you can come back to the breath, that will keep us here. All right. Um, there's also a reality acceptance component to mindfulness. And so there's another John Kabat-Zinn uh, quote here. And John Kabat-Zinn is an expert um, teacher um, of mindfulness, actually. He, he, he created the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program, which is an eight-week program that teaches about mindfulness and really popularized it in the United States. Um, and, and helped helped to bring awareness to mindfulness through it. Um, but anyway, this quote is, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. Okay, so there's things in life that we can't control. For example, pandemics. And we have control, one of the only things we have control over is how we choose to respond. Okay. And mindfulness can help us slow down and make wise decisions and take care of ourselves. All right, so you practice mindfulness in a formal and informal ways. There's multiple ways to do it and you should figure out a way that works best for you. Here's some examples. So in terms of the informal practice, I would encourage you to use the five senses. So um, one, one very common activity is uh, thinking about five things I see, four things I feel, three things I hear. Um, so just really grounding yourself in the present moment with those. Another one that you can do is um, using the 
colors of the rainbow, the Roy G. Biv, so the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and saying, all right, I'm looking for five red things in my environment. Okay, now I'm looking for five orange things. Okay, five yellow things, five green, five. Okay, and that's a way to ground yourself in the present moment. Another one is mindful eating. This is great. And if you, you eat an orange mindfully or any other food mindfully, that orange is going to be the best orange you've ever tasted. It's, it's a pretty amazing. It really enhances the experience. Or maybe you'll figure out you've been eating a certain food your whole life and you're like, I don't really like this anymore. <laughs> I really don't like this. Why do I keep eating it? So um, it's interesting. Um, so those are just some examples of how to practice mindfulness in a more organic way. Just walking out your door and being aware of the sunshine and the warmth and any smells or any sounds that you hear. That's mindfulness. And that's part of being fully alive and really enhancing our experience as humans. Formal mindfulness practices include meditation, um, so sitting, walking, guided meditations, focusing on the breath, yoga, tai chi, qigong, all of those. And I have a practice for you here that I would like to do. I know we're getting close to the end here, um, but this is um, a gata. And um, so gata, it's a scan Sanskrit term for verse recited silently in rhythm with the breath intended to help focus the mind on the here and now. Um, so this is, these, these are um, gatas that Thich Nhat Hanh uses and Thich Nhat Hanh is a, is a um, Zen Buddhist monk from, originally from Vietnam. And um, so here's a couple. Uh, actually, um, Lori Shannon, our internet marketing director, she, she came up with this really great idea that how could we incorporate mindfulness and um, hand washing? Because we're doing that right now. You know, you, sometimes people talk about, oh, well, you know, sing the happy birthday song or sing the alphabet song, and that'll get you to wash your hands for longer. Well, you, you could do one of these, particularly the second one, because it's a little longer, but let's, let's practice this real quick here. Um, what you do is you, you say it in your mind and you inhale on the first line and then you exhale on the second line. So let's do the first one. It's for washing hands. So I will read it out loud and then you just breathe along with me. Okay. Here we go. Water flows over these hands. May I use them skillfully to preserve our precious planet. Okay. And when you exhale, you can kind of, you know, let your let some tension come out of your body. Um, this next one, this turning on the water, this one's a little longer, so you could use this for washing your hands. So let's try this one, okay? I'm going to read it out loud again, and um, you just do the breathing along with me, okay? So here we go. Water comes from high mountain sources. Water runs deep in the earth. Miraculously, water comes to us and sustains all life. My gratitude is filled to the brim. Okay. So there's, there's mo many examples of gatas out there that you can do. There's some gatas for turning on your computer, for brushing your teeth, for um, eating, all of these. But um, Lori, as I was mentioning, Lori Shannon, our, our marketing director, internet marketing director, came up with this image. And 
Um, so it's kind of cool if you if you wanted to copy it and print it and put it on your bathroom mirror, it might be a way to practice mindfulness and to wash your hands for a little bit longer and do a real good thorough job. Um, okay, um, one one final thought here. This is from Brene Brown. I saw this today. I wanted to share it. Love is the last thing we need to ration right now. Comparative suffering is dangerous. Empathy is not finite. When we practice empathy, we create more empathy. The exhausted ER doctor doesn't benefit more if you reserve your empathy only for her and ignore your feelings or withhold empathy from someone lower on the suffering scale. Hurt is hurt, and every time we honor our own struggle and the struggles of others by responding with empathy, the healing that results affects us all. Okay. So again, we're all in this together. I hope this was helpful to you, uh, and that if if you, you know, we're going to be posting this on our. Um, you know, on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you want to share this with loved ones, please feel free and um, feel free to reach out and, and connect with us if there's anything we can do to support you or share resources, things like that. Okay, so I'm ready for questions. I, here's the list of resources I wanted you to have. I'm ready for questions. So if you want to type them in to the chat function, I can I can answer. Okay, let's see. Chat, here it is. Okay. Um, what is the best, okay, so we've got a question here. What is the best way to introduce these concepts to someone who is highly anxious? That's a great question. I would say um, maybe asking the person what they, what works for them, you know, what, um, so, you know, what their anxiety is like. So if they're experiencing a lot of physical anxiety, then maybe they want to do some things to calm their body down. Um, so thinking about self-soothing strategies, uh, paced breathing, so counting your breaths, really slowing that down. Um, or if, if it's more uh, ruminating in their mind, then it might be about, um, I mean, we, I'm thinking of a skill, we have a skill called mindfulness of current thoughts where um, you just label your thoughts, you're aware, you remind yourself that I'm not my thoughts, um, I, I have a brain that is you know, releasing chemicals that's creating thoughts and that's just what it does. And it doesn't mean that the thoughts are true, that I have to believe them or, or go with them. Um, I just have to label them and realize that they're thoughts and so call them for what they are. So, oh, I'm noticing a thought that I'm, I'm, I'm scared I'm always gonna be alone noticing that thought and then letting it go. And then another thought will come. So 
I hope that was helpful. Just figuring out what kind of anxiety, assessing for what kind of anxiety it is, and then um, maybe, maybe just offering, if you find a really nice resource, sending it to them. That might be, or asking them if they are interested in resources. So that might be the thing to do as well. Any other questions? Uh-huh. Good, I'm so glad. Absolutely, yeah, thank you for asking that. Okay, so the question was, are there any good apps for breathing techniques? And um, on this resource page, I just want you to see here, um, I didn't mention it in the talk, but um, under mindfulness resources, there's apps. And I mentioned Headspace, Calm, Insight Timer. Those are all really helpful for the breathing. Oh, good. Okay. So someone just said they use Headspace. Mm -hmm. Those are really helpful. Good. Thank you. All right, and let's see. I think um, I have time for a, one more question. If anyone has one. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you so much for joining everyone. And please take good care of yourselves, take care of each other. And I wish you all well. Thanks for joining. Pass along any resources that you've got here that are helpful to others and um, take care. Thank you so much.